Hey, hey, what's going on guys? Matthew Fitchner here with you today. Super excited to be kicking off this Amazon private label product research video. Today we're going to go over the exact steps that I use on Amazon.com using their own search bar and their own search algorithms to find some killer products. So whether you're a brand new seller that's just struggling to get that first product off the ground or you're an experienced seller who's just always looking for ways to grow your business as huge as possible. I think everybody's going to learn something in this video today. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. So we're going to go over four methods today. And my hope is that with these four methods in about uh, 20 to 30 minutes of your time, we can find at least 10 viable products to dig deeper into. So method number one, the negative search method. Alrighty, so here we are on Amazon.com's homepage for the negative search term method of product research. Now, as the name suggests, the negative search term starts by entering a minus sign in the search bar. Now, I just, after the minus sign, we are going to type a string of random letters and numbers that mean absolutely nothing and we're going to hit enter now by doing this we're telling amazon to look up every product in the database that is not titled kjnsd f34 blah 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 so basically we're saying find find and display every product in your category and as you can see right here results one through 16 of over a hundred million products in the catalog now this in and of itself isn't that helpful for us but what we can do from here is we can click down on the left into one of our parent categories. So every item in Amazon's catalog falls under a parent and then subsequent uh, subheadings. And this is just a way of them organizing the catalog into um, segments that actually make sense for the consumer. Uh, so let's go ahead and click down into uh, one of my favorites this time of year, uh, Garden and Outdoor, going into the spring and summer season. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, well, why don't I just go to the best sellers page and click in the garden and outdoor? And don't worry, we're actually going to go over a method that utilizes the best sellers list here shortly. But this is a little bit different because this gives us a little bit more randomization. Uh, and um, rather than showing just insanely high selling products, this will show us. Um, I don't really know where they get the data, but this is basically like showing us a completely different data set of patio lawn and garden items. And as you'll notice, Looking through these, and you can tell just by the review count, these are not like the killer, like bestseller things, but they are on page one in this category with the negative uh, search method. So um, there are definitely some products that are doing well enough to be ranking uh, pretty high on Amazon. So a couple of things we're going to look for. And if you're wondering all these random letters and this data that I have above each one of these listings, I use Helium 10's free Google Chrome plugin. And all this does is take a lot of the information that you have to actually click into the listing to see, and it's putting it right here. So the most important thing that I care about is this number right here, the BSR or best sellers rank. Now, every item in Amazon's catalog has a BSR, and all that is is an indication of recent sales volume. So something with a lower number BSR or a higher ranking is selling higher than something with a higher numbered BSR. So what that means, if you were number one BSR in any category, your product is probably selling hundreds, if not thousands of units a day. If you're number one million, you're probably selling like one every six months. So general rules of thumb um, when looking at BSR, anything that's a lower number than a thousand is going to be pretty competitive, very high volume. But if you can find something with low competition, it's definitely something to go after. Under a thousand BSR, you're probably selling at least 50 units a day. Now from 1,000 to 5,000 is kind of a sweet spot for private labelers. You're talking probably 20 to 40 units a day on average with a BSR between one and 5,000. And between five and 10,000, if you're a newer private label seller, don't quite have the money for as much inventory, products in that range tend to sell 10 to 20 a day. So still a pretty good startup product, product for a, a newer private labeler. Anything with a BSR higher than 10,000, generally speaking, is not high volume enough that you're going to be able to like really grow your business at the rate that you might want to. So those are just some general rules of thumb, but they do change a little bit by category. So now taking a look at these, the other most important thing that I'm looking for on these initial listings is the review count. Now, why is the review count so important? 
the organic review rate on Amazon is only between about one and three percent. So that means if you sell a hundred of this expanding green garden hose, you're probably only going to get one or two reviews. So if you start seeing products with hundreds or thousands of reviews, that means they sold ten thousands or even hundreds of thousands of units. And there's no way as an entry level private label seller, you're ever going to be able to keep up with them. So I generally like to look at products with a review count below 100 because that means the market is not completely saturated and I could potentially get in as a private label seller. So let's go ahead and take a look at just so we can see the first the first three organic searches, the first three organic items that show up for this negative search term in the patio lawn and garden category. All three look like pretty decent private label products. So we've got a garden stand. Let's go ahead and open that one. This garden hose review counts a little bit high, and I also just kind of know from experience that these expandable garden hoses can be a little bit saturated with private label sellers. So we'll skip that one. And then we've got this solar fountain, BSR of 1800, review count of 25. That's also looking like a pretty good product. So let's go ahead and looks like I clicked back instead of forward. Let's go ahead and I'll click on that one. All right, here we go. So let's open that one up. Now, once I've opened a couple products up, um, the best way to kind of tap into the market and find out um, how well this market is as a whole is to narrow down the title and then search for similar items. So if I type in the search bar, garden flag, stand, pole, holder, premium, metal, rot, iron, powder coated, weatherproof, paint, steel without flag, likely I'm only going to see like this one item or a couple other items very, very similar. But I kind of want to see like a broader market. So what I want to do is take this title and narrow it down to the fewest number of words that accurately describe this. So usually like two or three words. So this is, so flag stand, flag stand pull. Um, three words is probably about the best uh, that we can do for this one. So I'm gonna copy and paste flag stand pull and take a look at the market on that one. Now same thing when this uh, solar fountain loads here. Uh, again, kind of long tail on the, uh, on the full title here. So ultimately at the core, this is a solar powered fountain pump. So we're gonna copy solar fountain and pump and take a look at that. Okay, now that my uh, results are loading here for flag stand, uh, there's one of two tools that I recommend for analyzing this entire page as a whole. Now, kind of like the old school way of doing this is actually to manually click into every single one of these listings, look up the BSR, look up the price, things like that. Um, write them down in a, in a spreadsheet or on a piece of paper and then go back and analyze that data. Well, that's a terrible, uh, terribly inefficient way to do project research. So most people these days are using one of two tools. There's the Jungle Scout Chrome extension, which I'm going to run and show you guys on this product. And then there's the Viral Intelligence or the Viral Launch Market Intelligence tool, uh, also a Chrome plugin that I'm going to run on this product. Now, uh, Jungle Scout was the golden standard for quite a few years, um, and it's still a really good tool. You can get it for $100 for the basic uh, extension or $200 uh, for the little bit more advanced pro extension, and that's a one-time flat rate fee. Market Intelligence is actually um, quite a bit newer, just launched a few months ago, and that is a subscription-based service, so I think their cheapest plan is around $30. Um, both are definitely good tools, but I'm finding more and more these days that market intelligence's data is a little bit more up to date, a little bit more accurate. They also have a lot of additional features that Jungle Scout haven't hasn't added to their app yet uh, that I've really kind of gotten used to. So I like both of them. I think Jungle Scout's a little bit quicker, been around longer, market intelligence, a little bit more accurate, and I think some uh, some more tools. So uh, let's take a look at this um, data that we pulled for flag pools. Now, regardless of which tool I'm using, the first thing that I do um, once I run the data is I sort by revenue, this column right here, and I sort from high to low. So what I want to see is that there's a good amount of sellers, usually like 10 to 12 sellers, that are making at least six to $8,000 a month or more. So in this case, we see it looks like about the top 10 are doing between $8,000 a month and $33,000 a month revenue. Uh, so this is a pretty decent market um, with some opportunity for another entrant possibly. So the next thing I like to do is go one column over and click on reviews. For reviews, I like to click and sort from low to high. And what I'm looking for here, like we talked about, reviews are one of the highest barriers to entry. So if I can find somebody with a low review count that's already doing a good amount of revenue, 
that's a good indication for me as a newer entrant into this market that I can just get a few reviews, maybe a couple dozen reviews and start getting organic, consistent sales right off the bat. So taking a look at these numbers, this guy with only four reviews is doing 5,000 a month. This guy with nine reviews is doing almost 9,000 a month revenue. Here's a couple doing 5,000 a month. Um, and then we start getting into 50, 60 reviews. By the time we get to 50 or 60 reviews, these guys are doing 14,000 a month, 17,000 a month. So this at initial glance looks like a pretty solid pro product. I can jump in, get five to 10 reviews, start organically selling five to $10,000 a month. So our very first product we, we found using the negative search bar tool looks like a pretty viable product that we'd want to dig into deeper. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this into just a Word document. Now there's a ton of tools out there um, that you can use other than just a basic Word document. Um, and I am going to share some of my templates with you in Excel spreadsheets, but for the sake of getting through as much great data as quickly as possible, uh, I'm just gonna copy and paste that into a Word document for now. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our data for the solar fountain pump. So even though the, the interface looks a little bit different, the data is really uh, similar to Jungle Scout here. So I'm going to go through the same method. I'm going to sort by monthly revenue, high to low. Um, this gives you kind of a red uh, red color over anything that's a sponsored listing. So you can kind of ignore that. Um, so this shows me that the top six or seven people are doing more than 7,000 a month. And then the next five or six people after that are only doing about three to 4,000 a month. So there's some potential there, but not a whole lot of depth. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the review rating. Again, go by review count sorting or review quantity sorting low to high. And we've got uh, this guy here doing 9,000 a month on eight reviews. Uh, this guy here, 4,500 a month with 18 reviews. And then really the next guy that's doing pretty well, um, 7,100 with 105 reviews. So I would say with this product at initial glance, the review count's a little bit higher than I prefer um, for the amount of revenue. Um, so this is a decent product, but uh, probably not one I'm gonna add to my list of products to dig into any deeper. So just a quick recap of, uh, of what we did here with those search methods. So the negative search method, we typed in a minus sign, sign a string of random letters and numbers click down into one of the parent categories. And right here, just on page one, we found two products. And out of those two, one of the two looks like a potentially uh, viable product. So that's a recap of the negative search bar method. And now we're gonna go ahead and jump into the next product research method. So our next method, spying on other private label sellers. So this product research method is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. We're going to look around, we're going to browse through Amazon's catalog, and we're going to see if we can identify some products that are being sold by other private label sellers. Then we're going to click into their seller stores and find out what other things they might be having success with. So we can kind of take some ideas off of trending products from other private labelers. So the way I like to find um, some of the best selling products is literally just type in Amazon, the best sellers in any search engine that you like, and it should be the first result that pops up. So clicking into that, right here we have the homepage for the Amazon bestsellers. Now this is a little bit different than what we got from doing the negative search word method. So in that method, it's a little bit more random as far as the ideas that would show up on page one, but this is the actual top, like the lowest number BSR uh, products in each parent category. Now, if we just look at one of the parent categories, we're going to see, you know, BSRs of literally one through 100 for the top 100 selling items. Now, those are all likely to be extremely high competition. You're going to see a lot of name brands, a lot of really big ticket private label sellers, some stuff that's probably a little bit too competitive for a beginner. So what I like to do is click one or two categories deep. So as you can see, I click on arts, crafts and sewing. And then the next layer down. Uh, this is the second layer down. Now, some of these go like seven, eight, nine steps deep, and you can get some really obscure kind of stuff. But I find that between uh, one and two categories down under the parent category, you can start finding a lot of really good private label ideas. So let's go ahead and click uh, two down in this category. So we're arts, crafts, and sewing, and then we're going into beading and jewelry making. Now, it kind of depends on the category. If you go in the kitchen uh, category that's pretty competitive, usually one or two layers down, uh, it's still going to be way too competitive. 
arts, crafts, and sewing is a little bit smaller category. So we're probably going to see some products uh, just on this first page. So as you can see, we've got uh, this guy, number one seller, uh, 1,700 reviews. So that's pretty competitive. We'll probably see some brand names in here. But basically what I'm looking for is uh, something that's obviously a private label kind of product, so not a main brand, and something with a pretty low review count indicating that uh, it's a newer seller. So um, right here we've got one with, uh, so he's number 14 in this category, 32 reviews, $19 price point. I like that. So let's go ahead and click and take a look at that listing. So we might actually find a good product on the first click in this method. In this case, uh, Slime Supplies Kit. You might as well uh, go ahead and do a search for that and see if that's a good, um, maybe we found a good product just on the first click. But more importantly, what I'm looking to do is get to this guy's seller store and see what other kinds of things he's selling. So to do that, just below this in stock uh, button here, you'll see the uh, seller, the store, store name. So it'll say sold by, uh, sometimes this will be Amazon, but in this case, ZZWPY, definitely not a big name brand. So I'm assuming that's a, uh, another private, either a wholesaler or a private label seller. And we'll be able to tell the difference here shortly. Now, to get into their actual storefront, we're going to have to click on this hyperlink right here under their store name. But one thing that I want to point out on this page is this right here. So this gives you the number of ratings. So this is seller feedback um, that the, this seller has gotten in the last 12 months. So like we talked about with the reviews earlier, the organic review uh, product review rate on Amazon is about 1% to 3%. Well, that goes for seller ratings too. Amazon is kind of confusing for a lot of sellers in that you can leave, leave feedback for the seller or you can leave a product review. And not many people really know the difference between those. So you'll find that uh, roughly, generally speaking, for every product review you get, you'll get about one uh, seller feedback ranking as well. So what that tells us though, or what that, that enables us to do looking at other sellers is if we multiply this number right here by about 35 or 40, that gives us a rough estimate of how many total products this person sold in the last year. This guy's got about 50 ratings times uh, times 40. So he's probably sold about 2,000 items this year to get this uh, 54 seller, uh, or these 54 seller ratings. So that's important to know. So when we start spying on other private label sellers or any seller really, we can get an idea of how big their store are and how successful they are. Uh, just by multiplying this number here by 40. But anyway, so clicking on through to the ZZWPY storefront, this works just like an Amazon search page. So if I search something in the main bar, it's going to show me the highest sellings or most relatable items first. It's the same thing with the seller store. So Amazon is going to rank these roughly by how many they're selling. So if we scroll down, we'll see um, down here we've got some items, BSR and like the one or two million. So he probably sells like one of these a month. But up top, we see his like best selling items. So we can see that the first item, the slime supplies kit um, is with a BSR of 100. Obviously, he's doing really well with that. Uh, we also see this uh, scrapbook. This is a slime supplies kit as well. So it looks like he's having some success with that. He's got two different ones launched. Uh, but he's also got this product that's selling reasonably well, BSR of 20,000. That's a little low. Um, but we can click into that and see what that total market looks like. But like I said, we do want to go ahead and take a look at the slime supply kit that this guy is selling uh, at a pretty high volume. So we're going to pull that up and then we're going to take a look at this golf putting mirror. So again, we're going to shorten this to the shortest term we can. So let's go with golf putting mirror and take a look at that market. And then let's take a look at the slime supplies kit. So this is loading up now. So we'll go ahead and run the extension on slime supplies. And as soon as this loads, we'll run the extension for the golf putting tool as well. Okay, so clicking over to the slime supplies kit. Uh, we're going to do what we always do. We're going to sort by revenue first, high to low. And we can see, uh, so this guy sponsored ad, we'll exit out of that. Um, but we can see this guy is selling 57,000 a month, 23,000. So we've got, uh, looks like five sellers above 10,000. Behind them, we have another five sellers between 6,000 and 8,000, so some pretty good revenue numbers. So sorting by review count, we can see somebody with um, 8,000 in revenue on only four reviews. Here's a couple sponsored ones, but going down here, 8,000 revenue on 14 reviews, uh, 11,000 revenue on 21 reviews. 
So this looks like it could potentially be a pretty good product. So we are going to go ahead and add that to our product tracker. All right, so just uh, just with our first uh, product that we found using this private label spying method, we've already found a pretty good product. Uh, let's take a look at the numbers for the golf putting alignment tool. Okay, so sorting first by revenue, we can see that there are about seven or eight products above 6,000. And then sorting by reviews, we can see uh, three reviews, 6,000, five reviews, 4,500 a month. So really, really low review count, kind of low revenue numbers as well. What I suspect with um, with something like this is we might just not have uh, the best search terms. So we search for golf putting mirror. Uh, we might want to try golf putting tool, golf alignment tool, try three or four different things until we find really that seed uh, short tail uh, keyword that gets us into this product category. But I would say this is definitely another product worth looking into with those kind of numbers, super low review count. And uh, doing revenue in like the four to six thousand range, uh, so we're definitely going to add that. So we can see just with the second method, the first two things that we clicked on, we've already got two potential uh, products. So just a quick recap of what we did here: uh, we went to the Amazon bestsellers, just a Google search for that. We clicked two categories down, started looking through all the listings until we found uh, what looked to be a private label product that was doing well with low reviews. Then we clicked into that person's storefront. We took a look at his best-selling items, clicked into each one of those markets, ran the analysis, and we've already found two more products um, just from the second search method. Product research method number three, the search bar autofill. Now, I want you to stick with me. This is something that, um, that a lot of other people out there teach, and we're going to find some cool products this way. But the real power of this comes in with my fourth research method. This is kind of an insider's trick that nobody else is really using. So we're going to go over the basics of the search bar autofill now. And then we're going to get into the advanced method with our fourth product research method today. So why is it so important to understand how the search bar autofill method works on Amazon? Well, remember back to the beginning of the video, we talked about the importance of the Amazon search bar. More than half of all e-commerce searches are originating right here, not even on a search engine. People just coming straight to Amazon and using their own search bar. So Amazon knows how important this is and knows how powerful this is. So what they've done is they program the search bar in a way that it auto suggests things based on the highest search volume. So, for example, if I type in and I like to use uh, different adjectives because it shows all kinds of uh, different markets and different categories. So if I start typing in the word large. Amazon is guessing what I'm going to type next based on what everybody else is searching for. So apparently people that start a search with the word large, the highest search item they're looking for is large dog bed, followed by large dog crate, large dog toys, and so on and so forth. So this is super important to know as a seller that's looking for markets. So now I know that the apparently the large dog product market is a huge market. So what I can do is I can start with an adjective like large. Um, I can hit a space bar and then I can type in any other letter and it'll autofill um, suggestions for that letter. So large A, we've got area rugs, air plants, uh, alcohol wipes. If I delete that and type in B, we get binder clips, band-aids, bubble wrap, all kinds of different things. So this is a really powerful way to search for products. Uh, one of my favorites this time of year is to look for outdoor products. We're getting into the summer season. And these things uh, absolutely blow up during the summer. So I'm just going to start with the word outdoor and see what it auto suggests. So we've got uh, string lights, furniture, rug, furniture and rugs, a little bit oversized for a first product. Um, outdoor toys looks interesting. Um, pillows, maybe not so much. Uh, games sounds interesting. Lights. So I like uh, toys and games. Those both sound like they'll probably have some smaller products that are easier to source. So outdoor games okay so we got outdoor games searching here and then outdoor toys on this other search and we're looking for the same stuff we're always looking for we want to see somebody that's got a pretty high organic ranking which means they're likely to have a low bsr um, and we're looking for low review counts other private label products things like that avoiding any big brands and anything that looks too competitive so uh, right here, we see organic spot number four or five. This guy, a BSR of 4,500, only 19 reviews. So 
uh, potential product there. Let's take a look at that. Uh, here's another one, 1600 BSR with only 22 reviews. So let's take a look at that one. This looks like a name brand product, this, uh, this chart. So we'll stay away from that. Um, and then here's another potential good one. So kids garden tool set. So we got 2300 BSR on 15 reviews. So there's three products off the toys page. And let's take a look at the games and pull some stuff up. Actually, we'll get uh, Jungle Scout running on the background on these. So uh, kids, garden, toy, tool, beach, sand. So I'm going to go with, let's see, kids, sand, kids beach set maybe? Or kids toy beach set. Okay, then we've got um, outdoor scavenger hunt. So let's do scavenger. Um, and this is another way that we can use the autofill. So we just type in scavenger and Amazon's telling us, hey, this is what people are typically looking for. So uh, let's go scavenger hunt game. Uh, so then this one we've got outdoor explorer gear play set. So let's try explorer, uh, explorer kit, kids explorer kit. Let's just do explorer kit. That's a uh, pretty short tail. Okay, so while these things are pulling up, we're going to look at our outdoor game search. So we've got, uh, let's see, this is 23,000 BSR, so a little bit low there. Got a branded product. Uh, here's one, though, so 4,000 BSR, uh, 84 reviews, so that looks like it's got some potential. Here we see that nature, nature scavenger hunt game again, so that's showing up on the top of a couple different searches. Uh, Franklin Sports, there's another brand name, so we will uh, cruise past that for now. Um, so it looks like we really maybe just one good one from the outdoor uh, game search that we did. Okay, so we've got um, the kids' toy beach set here. Let's run Jungle Scout on that. Then we've got on this page the scavenger hunt kit coming up. So uh, let's just make sure that this is actually. Yeah, it looks like we've got some other scavenger hunt kits and card games. So uh, we'll go ahead and run the search on that one. Uh, this one coming up with the Explorer kit. Just taking a look. Yep, yeah, it looks like it's all kids uh, adventure explorer kind of sets. So it looks like we've got a good search on that one. And then we've got to find the short term one for this so giant wooden playing dice set. So I'm just going to go with giant. Uh, let's see if it comes up. No, so giant dice. Okay, and as soon as this loads, we will go ahead and run Jungle Scout on that as well. So let's take a look at these results and see what we are getting. So this one is the kids' toy beach set. So let's take a look at the revenue numbers, sorting high to low like we always do. Uh, these are some really good revenue numbers. So we've got a couple at fifty thousand a month, thirty thousand. But look at the depth of this market all the way down to like the 12th or 15th seller. We've got people selling six or seven thousand dollars a month or more. So let's sort by reviews. So we've got five reviews, eight thousand a month, 15 reviews, twenty five thousand dollars a month, uh, 16 reviews, thirty thousand dollars a month. So this looks like a great product to dig into a little bit more. Um, so one of the first ones we found kids toy beach set. We'll go ahead and add that to our list. Um, this looks like a really, uh, really great easy kill for a uh, summertime product. Now let's look at the scavenger hunt kit. So sorting first by revenue, we've got uh, a guy at thirty-five thousand. Here's some fives and sixes. But the thing about a market like this that I don't like is look at this. There's like five or six people doing pretty well, and then it's like absolutely nothing. So. We're getting a seven opportunity score. Let's take a look, sort by reviews real quick. Uh, looks like we've got a guy with 14 reviews, 6,500, 19 reviews, 8,200. So there's some potential here, um, but I'm kind of concerned about the depth of the market. But this could be an issue similar to our putting tool that we just aren't searching for like the perfect keywords. So I'm going to call this a maybe. I think this is definitely worth adding to the list because we do have a really low a review count and some people doing well with only like a dozen reviews. So we're definitely going to go ahead and throw that one on the list. 
Now let's take a look at the Explorer kits. Looks like the, the uh, extension didn't run, so we'll come back to that one. Uh, we're ready to go though with the giant dice. So let's sort by revenue. And it looks like we've got uh, some big sellers, 50,000, 20,000. Looks like all the way down to about the seventh or eighth biggest seller were 8,000 or more in sales. So again, sort by reviews, and we've got 3,500 with 16 reviews, 13,000 with 23 reviews, 5,000 with 40 reviews. So really maybe about three or four sellers with a low review count and uh, doing pretty well with sales. So I would say that is another one worth adding to the list. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch back to the Explorer kit and take a look. So sorting by revenue. Wow, we've got a ton of sales going with this. Look at this, 150,000, 160,000 a month. But look at this, all the way down to slot like 10 or 12, people are over $10,000 a month in revenue. And it looks like my review counts are pretty low as well. So we've got 15 reviews, $11,000 a month, 21 reviews, 10,000, 22 reviews, 30,000. So this might be our best product yet. We're talking a $30,000 a month product with only a couple of dozen reviews. So Explorer Kit is definitely going high on the potential product list. And there we go. So just on the word outdoor, we found four items that are all selling 10 to 30 plus thousand dollars a month with only a couple dozen reviews. So just on a single word that we searched for, we found a bunch of killer products. Before we move on to the final product research method, I wanna show you one more trick with the search bar autofill. So we just found some great products using adjectives. So we looked at large, small, outdoors, things like that. But you can also use the same trick to look for markets. So you can do men, women, dads, athletes, soccer players, all kinds of different things. Uh, one of my favorites though is to search for uh, gifts for people. Obviously a lot of people do their gift shopping these days on Amazon. So if I just type in the word gifts, we see it autofills, gifts for men, gifts for women, gifts for him. These are pretty broad term uh, or broad tail. So let's uh, drill down. So let's do gifts for, and we'll go back to our earlier method. We can start typing in letters, A, B, C. So let's do um, just gifts for A. And this gives us, uh, so this is kind of interesting. So I was thinking it was going to come up with an A word, but it actually gives us gifts for A blank. And then it shows us that gifts for a one-year-old boy or the most popular uh, gift search terms uh, when you type in gifts for. So let's take a look at that and see uh, what kind of products we have available. So we'll skip the, the uh, sponsor ads at the top. Uh, we can see some pretty competitive stuff, high review count. Um, this one, we'll wait for the BSRs to load. Uh, a little high in the review count, but with only 150 reviews, 750 BSR, um, maybe there's some potential there. We'll go ahead and take a look. Um, here's one with only 43 reviews, 3,700. So looks like a possible uh, product. Uh, let's see. Um, so these are both workbenches. So we've got 2,200 BSR. Uh, so we got two good private label products right here. So we're going to drill down into that market a little bit more. Uh, we've got some socks. Let's see this, a uh, little bit high on the BSR here for me. The mushroom garden learning kit. Uh, maybe some potential there. And another workbench. So we're seeing that workbenches are pretty popular with low review counts. So that could be a pretty good product. Um, so that's good off of uh, page one. We've got three potential products. So let's go ahead and drill down into each one of those and see what the markets look like. So we've got uh, plush talking jungle animals. So let's just type plush. Uh, toy, maybe plush toys, looks like a uh, pretty short tail. So we will search for that. Go ahead and get the Jungle Scout extension running. And then what we've got, so this is the one I was kind of interested in, these uh, learning, these workbench toy kits. So let's just do uh, two words, workbench toys, see what that gets us. Okay, run the extension there. And then best learning mushroom garden. This is such a terrible title. Only four words. This guy's got like no keywords. So um, it looks like I think best learning must be a brand name, family choice award winner. So this is uh, um, this may not be something worth private labeling. This looks kind of specific um, branded product. 
But what we could do is scroll down here and look into customers who bought this item also bought and see if there's anything that pops up here that looks like it could be good. So we've got um, stacking cups for toddlers uh, with only 30 reviews. Uh, so let's go ahead and click on that one, see if we've got anything there. In the meantime, let's kick back over to our search terms for, so this one was workbench toy. So we will sort by revenue first and we can see uh, 40,000, 50,000, people doing above 10,000 all the way down to about spot 10. Below that, we've got about five or six sellers between 5,000 and 10,000. So some pretty good uh, numbers across the board there. And then sorting by review counts, we can see we've got um, 23 reviews, 16,000, 23 reviews, 30,000, 32 reviews, 10,000. Uh, so we definitely have some lower review count sellers doing over $10,000 a month. So I think we found another potential product to add to the list. So remember, these, these we all found using outdoor. And then this next uh, group we're finding using the word uh, gifts or gifts for one-year-old boy more specifically. So let's look at the plush toys. Sorting by revenue, we've got some pretty solid numbers here. Again, 20,000, 30,000. Looks like all the way down to about spot 10 is doing more than 10,000 a month. Uh, we do have higher review counts here. So we've got a, a successful person here, a non-sponsored one at 13 reviews, $12,000 a month. Um, but then it kind of jumps up into 50 plus reviews, which isn't untenable. Um, but this might be a little bit harder market to break into. We can see the average review count on all of page one, about 300 reviews. But we do have a good price point. We've got a lot of people selling 10, $20,000 a month. Uh, so this one might be a little bit more uh, difficult market to drill into, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and add this one to the list. Uh, one thing is we could go a little bit longer tail on this word. So maybe plush toy for baby, plush toy for boy. I think if we added one more, um, one more uh, layer to the niche there, uh, we could probably find um, some a little bit less competitive products that are still doing some good sales numbers. So the last one that we found, remember we found this one by going to the people that saw, or people that bought this also bought. Um, so we'll do stacking cups for toddlers. Now uh, this defaulted us to toys and games because that was in the category we just were. Uh, so we'll go ahead and make sure that we click all departments and make sure that we're getting the full spectrum of the search possibilities. Okay, and we will run the extension on this one. Uh, for revenue, we've got uh, really not not quite as much uh, total volume. So we've got people kind of in the four to eight thousand range, about five or six sellers there. Uh, review count looks a little bit high at initial glance. So we've got uh, one person with twenty three reviews doing sixty three hundred, uh, and then everybody else is kind of in the sixty to eighty reviews doing around seven thousand a month. Uh, so this is a product that I think doesn't have enough depth, doesn't have enough uh, potential revenue for the number of re reviews that we have. So I will call this one a bust. So just a quick recap on this method. So instead of starting with an adjective like we did um, earlier on, we started with the word gifts and we found gifts for one year olds. Uh, drilled down on, into that a little bit. And we found workbench toy and plush toy um, as two really good uh, potential products for uh, the word gift. And that does it for product method number three. All right, so if you stuck with me this far, we are on the final product research method, the backwards search bar autofill. Now, what I really like about this search method is it's so simple, but it's something that very, very few people know about. It's kind of like an insider's trick. So um, we're going to use something similar to what we did last time. So remember, we use Amazon's autofill uh, feature. So remember the last one we learned that we uh, looked for was gifts for, pulled up gifts for a one-year-old boy. We found some great products there. But what if I don't want to know what comes after the word, but I want to know what comes before the word. So there's actually a way that you can find that out. So if we do, um, so let's go ahead and do one of these broader uh, searches. So gifts for uh, women. So like we talked about, that's probably a little bit too broad tail um, to go for uh, right off the bat. Um, but there's a trick. I can actually get Amazon to autofill in front of this search term. Now to do that, we want to click or arrow all the way over to the left, type in any letter and a space. 
and then arrow back over and delete that letter. Now Amazon is going to automatically populate some of the most popular searches that end with gifts for women. So we've got birthday gifts for women, 40th birthday gifts for women, retirement gifts. Um, so it only gives you five options here though by default. I'm not sure re really why it does that, but we can use the same tricks we were using earlier. We can do type in individual letters. So if I do A, gifts for women, it does April gifts, AKA sorority gifts, Aries gift, adult baptism. So it actually front fills the uh, search term instead of back filling it. So this is super powerful because this basically doubles the amount of uh, products that we can find from just doing the autofill that fills in the back part of the word. So uh, let's see if there's anything in here for A gifts for women. Um, angel gifts, that sounds uh, like a potential market. Let's do, uh, while that one's pulling up, let's do, go ahead and do a search for men too, see what kind of gift products are out there. So gifts for men and just review, click back to the beginning, type any letter in the space bar, arrow back over, delete this out, and then let's see what it comes up with. So birthday, anniversary, retirement, 60th. Uh, how about this one? Firefighter gifts for men. Okay, so the angel gifts for women is popping up. Let's see what Jungle Scout has to say about that. And then firefighter gifts for men. We'll go ahead and run the tool on that one as well. And let's see what we've got for angel gifts. Okay, sorting first by revenue, high to low. Uh, 28,000, 20,000. Uh, so you can see not much depth to this. Um, really only about five or six people that are above like the 6,000 mark. Um, and I can see that the review count is kind of high for the number of sales. Uh, so it looks like our angel gifts might be a bust. Uh, that's okay. A lot of our searches are going to not result in anything. Uh, but this is really like kind of like the first true bust that we've had with all these product research methods. So um, A gifts for men didn't or for women didn't work, so let's do B gifts. Let's see. Uh, let's try beach gifts. Uh, meanwhile, let's take a look and see what our firefighter gifts uh, Jungle Scout research came up with. All right, we've got our data for the firefighter gifts sorting by revenue. Um, looks kind of similar to the angel market. So we've got um, somebody at 12,000, 5,000, 5,000. Uh, reviews in the 40s to 50s. So um, the firefighter gifts for men didn't quite work out for us. So let's uh, take a look and see if we got any luck from the beach gifts for women. And once again, sorting revenue, high to low. We've got, uh, this person's killing it, 127,000 a month, uh, probably in the middle of a giveaway or something. Um, but below that, we've got 18,000 all the way. So about five people between 7,000 and 18,000. Uh, about another group of four or five sellers in the four or 5,000 range. Uh, so some decent numbers there, not a whole lot of depth, but we've got some potential. Uh, let's take a look sorting by reviews. So we've got three reviews, 12,000, uh, 23 reviews, 7,000, 38 reviews, a little over 3,000. Uh, so we really have about two or three successful people with um, a few with like less than a couple dozen reviews doing 7,000 a month, $10,000 a month. So um, I would say this is worth digging into a little bit more. So this one will go on the product tracker. So beach gifts for women. And the thing I like about this is, so we've already identified that like beach gifts for women is a pretty decent market. Um, but we can always go shorter tail on this and just do beach gifts. That gets us a little bit more of a broader audience. Um, and I suspect probably a higher level of sales. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick, just out of curiosity. So our beach gifts numbers sorting by revenue. All right, we've got um, another big ticket one again. Um, but it looks like we've got still about six or seven people over 5,000 a month. Review count's a little bit higher. Um, so we might have actually found the best market with the beach gifts for women. A little bit more long tail, a little bit less competition, uh, but still some great potential. So a quick recap of what we did with the fourth and final product research method. So we talked about the autofill feature in product research method number three. A lot of people already know about that one. So what we did is we actually found out a trick to double the amount of searches that we can find using the search bar by going back to the beginning of the word, typing in any letter and deleting it. And then now we have the option to type in any letter we want 
and Amazon will front fill the suggested search for us. So it doubles the amount of products that we're able to find from just the more traditional autofill method. All right, guys, so that wraps up our product research video. I hope you guys learned a ton from this one. In just a little over half an hour, we used my four favorite techniques on Amazon to find 10 potential products to dig into. If you did get value out of this, please do me a big favor. Hit that subscribe button below. Smash the notification bell when it comes up. That way, YouTube will let you know when all future videos of mine come out. Also, if you have any questions or anything that you want to go over in more depth, please let me know in the comment section. I definitely read every single comment and I want to know what you guys want to learn about this business so I can help you out as much as possible. So I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video.